And the move by two separate Mount Kenya groups to hold separate dinners in preparation for the weekend rally in Meru has yet again brought to the fore the widening political rifts in the region over the heated 2022 succession politics. But what fresh dimensions is this rift likely to take and what roles might opinion leaders and captains of industry play in the roadmap, in the roadmap to Uru Kenyatta succession politics? KTN political reporter Moremi Mwangi explains. Like a dormant volcano erupting at its least expected time, the Mount Kenya region, Kenya's arguably most tranquil and homogeneous voting bloc, and the bedrock of President Uhuru Kenyatta's support base, <laughs> is in the middle of what could, until recent times, be described as its most vicious explosion whose political discharge continues to widen leadership fault lines in the region on the roadmap to the 2022 Kenyatta succession race. <laughs> and such was the state of affairs on Monday, as over 30 legislators allied to Deputy President William Ruto's Tangatanga camp, drawn from the 10 counties in the region, convened at the Panafric Hotel... <laughs> in a parallel meeting to another one convened by politicians, opinion leaders and captains of industry from the region to prepare for the weekend Building Bridges Initiative Sensitization Forum, the Mount Kenya chapter in Meru. From the Mount Kenya region. The grand divide between both camps clear from the speeches. If there are memorandums to be given, we will have our own memoranda as the elected uh, representatives of the people. We will not... Uh, abrogate our mandate as elected representatives to a coterie of political brokers. That we will not do. You know, the same time when you have this big show, there are people who it is It means we have not learned our lesson. But what really is the basis of this divide and what role might opinion leaders and business moguls from the Mount Kenya region play in the growing rift? For a region that has produced three of the country's four presidents and sat at the helm of executive authority for 32 of Kenya's 57 years of independence. <laughs> strategic, political and commercial interests of key Mount Kenya opinion leaders was certainly poised to emerge in the Kenyatta succession roadmap. Among key attendees of the Safari Park BBI preparations meeting were cabinet secretaries James Masharia and Joe Musheru, tens of principal and chief administrative secretaries, as well as key business leaders from the region. We are still expecting more members who are on the way. Yet key speakers at the separate Tangatanga meeting described these as power brokers who had reportedly hijacked the BBI process, mainly to selfishly safeguard their personal commercial interests. But at the end of the day, the president of the Republic of Kenya is Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. And if he says that this is a good initiative, who are you? not to even want to sit down and listen to the reason why Uhuru thinks BBI is good. So today, the voice of government was heard, the voice of Uhuru was heard. This is the reason why Uhuru wants us to have BBI. The leadership meeting here this evening urges the president to urgently consider to suspend the ongoing ODM-led incitement lorries. Come, we will give each and every person an opportunity to give their views. In fact, it's so unfortunate that today, instead of them coming here to get a brief for what you have actually been given here, they decided to go to Panafric. The weekend Meru meeting rekindling memories of President Kenyatta's 2018 attempt to put his house in order that saw Mount Kenya Parliamentary Group retreat for a meeting in Naivasha, a routine that backfired over leaks in information and tough Kenyatta succession politics, a climax of which was reports that subsequent meetings of the Mount Kenya team at Lamada Hotel had been hijacked by technocrats from the region and reports that part of the agenda was a plot to assassinate Deputy President William Ruto. A matter still before investigative agencies. Murumi Mwangi, KTN News.